Hi, welcome to the discovery session, enabling peer feedback the right way at the right time. I am Karine. I have a doctor. I am doing my doctorate in education in instrument system technology. At the end of my degree, I'm supposed to create a tool for educator, but I did the opposite. I created Critic, and I'm conducting my research with Critic, a peer assessment tool. And Whitney is using Critic and she just finished her TV, so mm -hmm. tell I, us more. Yes, my name is Whitney Civil Sawyer. I work at the university um, in Louisiana called Louisiana Tech, and I have my doctorate in education in higher education administration, and I did my doctoral research on creating an instrument to measure the culture of assessment within educator preparation. Super. And I love Critic in the Classroom. Great, so let me talk to you about accreditation. So there is a system in America where the state uh, has some laws about defining um, the, the quality of education from the US Department of Education, as well as from SCSARA from the 21st century guideline. That helps to support inclusion, diversity, equity, um, online education, and the accreditation itself is per department or per discipline. One of the examples uh, that affect Whitney is uh, the CAEP, which is for edu preparation educator. Mm -hmm. And then the institution is in the middle, um, and then partner help institution achieving the goal. And as you can see on the right side, between accreditation and the US of education, OLC and quality matter out there to help bridging, bridging the gap between the high level of theory and what needs to be done in a classroom, such as developing the learning activity or the course content or all of those guidance to help educate. And it's key to make sure that those things work together um, and that they support each other in the process and cause harmonization between these processes. Super. And then uh, here there is a list of accreditation. Uh, and you can see the uh, table that align the NCSARA, Quality Matter Standards, OLC, and Institution. Um, I will focus on the first column, which is uh, the objective of standard, which is mission of the goal, where we provide success, uh, metrics, of, metrics of success for the students, uh, about the, how they can learn online. There is ethic, access, integrity, teaching and learning. And then there is student support and student satisfaction and educational effectiveness. And these things also all work together. Exactly. In order to measure uh, the quality of improvement process and uh, on, uh, make sure that the students get um, the job that they desire after the post-graduation. Okay, so. So um, we're going to talk about creating a culture of assessment now, and it's incredibly important when you're trying to create a positive culture of assessment that you shift that mindset into the growth mindset rather than compliance. And too often we focus on compliance with accreditation when the whole goal behind accreditation is continuous improvement. So the culture of assessment is the culture that underpins assessment practices that either supports those practices or obstructs them. And it is essential to create a positive culture of assessment with your students because they are integral to the assessment process. You are indeed assessing their work. And feedback is used to improve and validate instruments. Yes, and then you uh, you developed the rubrics, right? Yes, I did. So my rubric is based on CAPE accreditation, but these ideas can still be used with other accrediting bodies. Um, so the criteria are based on um, what we found were important factors in teacher education. Um, we util I utilized a Delphi panel of expert members, and then the domains are based on CAPE requirements. And for um, for what I do, the purposes of student assessment, they are actually um, engaging in the assessment process and it provides them a structured learning process. It also engages students more deeply in the content and they become critical thinkers rather than just regurgitating what you've taught them. It teaches how students how to self-assess and improve their submissions and it, they learn from um, this process because they learn how to utilize the feedback loop for growth and it creates an opportunity for students to learn from each other because they get to view each other's work. Super. So let's connect that to peer assessment. 
So here is the Teach Frameworks. It's about guiding students to provide meaningful and actionable peer feedback. So why what and why feedback? So it's important to uh, guide students for their future behavior and future performance. And also, uh, we, it's important to have students at the center for them to learn uh, by doing. And the teach model is T to give feedback on time uh, to make sure that they apply the knowledge learned before everything is finished. Uh, the feedback needs to be explicit to make sure that the student can measure what, where, and how they can improve. Uh, the feedback needs to be A, appropriate for the level of their understanding, C, considerate um, different uh, biases, uh, to be um, in the importance to be anonymous, the importance to understand every student's learning type, and it has to be age helpful to provide area of improvement. And what I love about this is that you start timely at the very beginning, and that's the biggest thing with feedback is that it must be timely to improve performance, and utilizing peer feedback allows for it to be much more timely than if you're just doing the feedback as the teacher. Exactly. And now um, let's uh, talk about how the teach model apply to quality model and OLC uh, and both together. So as you can see, I'm not going to go over the slide, but as you can see from the wordings of the rubrics, each elements are included. So to give a brief overview, overview the students give feedback in critic on the left side of the screen during the evaluation stage the students select stars and then the students select criteria to give feedback on and then they provide a comment and with my students the um one thing i've heard the most is that the feedback process in critic is just so easy with that rubric built in to give that quality feedback to your peers they make it so easy so during the feedback stage uh, on the right side this is two area that the creators come back after they read the evaluation from the peers and provide feedback on how the evaluation was given, if it was motivational yet critical. And then the professor as well can give feedback and critic. They can do two things. Yes, I really enjoyed this, uh, especially the highlight feature in Critic, because it allows me um, to go into some of these student submissions and pick out quality submissions based on if um, they go above and beyond and things like that and highlight those for my students so that they can see what a quality learning artifact looks like for that. And then you can also give individualized feedback to each of your students so that you still have the ability to engage in that feedback process with them. Yes. And then now, one case study that I would like to share is Alex Gitter. He had a class, uh, he's a professor of uh, economics at the University of Alberta. He had 1,600 students. And before Critic, he used multiple choice questions and he didn't give any feedback, uh, as you can see in the blue section. He gave only 160 feedback for the final exam. Um, and the student usually did not implement the feedback received into their assignment. Then later he used Critic, and now the evaluation that the student received from each other was about 5,800 uh, evaluation among each other. Some of them are high quality, some of them are low quality, uh, but the overall is that the students were able to learn from the feedback. And the good news is there's a calibration integrated where if the students receive a low uh, score from someone who has a low critical thinking skills, it's not going to impact their grade. Um, so, which leads to accuracy upgrade. And on the blue section, if you do the, the seventh spotlight that uh, Whitney mentioned, plus uh, about 300 uh, feedback that the professor gave to resolve dispute and flag, and the total amount of feedback is 11,000. And this is just great because it highlights that this professor was able to move away from multiple choice questions and into active learning activities that truly engage the students in the content rather than something more cursory like a multiple choice question. Great. And that now is just an example of his course. So basically he asked the student to create a short video. So instead of being the one doing the lecture and then uh, wait for the students to learn uh, and read the textbooks, he assigned the textbooks to create a lecture themselves and then evaluate each other. So there's a clear step for them to follow. And then here, I just want, he also provide an example in the instruction. 
And that is incredibly important to provide those examples for your students so that they know what you're looking for. And then there is also an option of multi-topic where the students can like um, utilize different concepts and apply differently in the same uh, learning activity. Now is your... Uh... Wonderful. <laughs> so um, I have used Critic now for a year. I've used it um, throughout the year and my students absolutely love it. Um, so here are some examples from my class. Uh, like I said, I do teach teacher education. So this is about lesson planning, which is an obviously pivotal part of teacher education. So I have found it's incredibly useful to set up Critic in this way where you put your learning objectives first. I um, also include a rationale so that my students understand the purpose behind the learning activity so they can connect it to actual practices in the classroom. And I set it up similar to my uh, learning management system so that all the resources for the assignment are built into Critic. This means that the students don't have to toggle back and forth between my learning management system and Critic. They can do it all within the Critic system. And of course, explicit directions are incredibly important. And then obviously you've got to tell them what you want them to submit and how you want them to submit it. So um, critics rubricing options are incredibly easy. They have a bunch of rubrics already built in, but for me, obviously with lesson planning, it's a little different and it takes just minutes to build these into critic and they offer two options for students. You can have the small view that allows them to assess it quickly or they can pop open the full rubric. Um, so it makes it really easy for them to complete the assessment in a timely manner. And then the peer evaluations, it shows to them exactly what the written evaluations were from each of their peers, what their scores received were, and then on the right side is the feedback of the feedback, which is one thing I really appreciate about Critic is that they build that in so that my students can learn to give better feedback as they go throughout the Critic process. And so for my class um, in winter 22, 91% of students participated. And um, what I really enjoyed is the dispute function in Critic. 7% of students disputed their grades. It makes it very easy for me to go into the system and um, grade it myself, assess it myself, um, and give feedback. Um, so like these quotes say right here, my students absolutely adore Critic. They, um, they have engaged in the learning process much more and they are excited to share their work with their peers and they create a portfolio anyway but being able to share your work directly with your peers and get feedback from them has been pivotal to their learning experience um, so my students have thoroughly enjoyed the critic experience and i continue i will continue to use it in the future thank you for watching this was a discovery session and uh I would be happy to see you today uh, to discuss more in person. Have a great day. We have a demonstration now of my course in Critic and the student view. Um, as I said, I've been using Critic for a year. And what I love is this dashboard at the top that shows me how much my students are actually engaging. And I'm able to go in there and see um, easily who has actually submitted assignments and where they stand in that. You'll see I have an introduction to critic activity that teaches my students how to actually assess in the system. As we discussed in um, our presentation with the teach model, it's incredibly important that you teach your students how to give appropriate feedback. So that's what I do with it, an intro to critic activity, and they also um, build in calibration activities too. So you can go down and see where I have spotlighted students' work. I always spotlight um, at least one student for each assignment. Usually these are people who are early completers. So a lot of times I can spotlight them before it's even time to turn in the assignment, which gives other students a chance to view a quality submission other than my example. And you can see down here activities. I have one pending now that I'm grading, but it shows you all these metrics down here at the very bottom so that you can easily see, are your students engaging in the activity? Are they giving feedback? Are they um, giving feedback on their feedback? And you can also see right here on the right side, all the grading disputes. And as you can see, they're very few considering um, the size of the class. So it going through grade disputes is the, um, least time intensive part, I think. And so let's turn and look at a student view. 
So this is a student of mine um, who did incredibly well in the class and she got the main concepts and you can look at her scores and see that. She um, did very well overall, but she gave quality feedback. She was timely in her process and she um, made sure to complete all three stages of the process in Critic. You can see that she didn't do as well in the Intro to Critic activity where she was learning, but that was a low stakes activity. Um, so you can see that she went into the system after that and she did indeed improve. And then down here, you can see the same thing that you see on my screen with the activities that are spotlighted so that the students can see those quality examples while you're doing it. And then it looks the exact same, except for it doesn't show the students the metrics because that is not any of their concern, how their peers are doing specifically within the system. So it's very similar. Um, and as a professor, it's incredibly easy to use as a student is an intuitive system and they thoroughly enjoy it. So good. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney.